here's a bit of a challenge. What if I give you the graph and I ask you to find the equation for me? Oh boy. Oh boy. Well, to find an equation then of a radical functions, you got to tell me the a, b, h, and k. That just makes sense. But another key thing that'll really, really help is use that reference of 1, 1, that point, that second point. Remember? That second point will actually help us determine your a value and your b value. You'll see in a minute. Okay, so remember, h and k basically is your endpoint. Look at the first graph. Okay, check this out. Your endpoint is right here now, right here. And if you notice, your endpoint is in fact at 0 minus 1. Aha. Uh -huh. So guess what? Your h value, you didn't move because your original one, think about it, was here going that way. But your k value, you actually went down by minus 1. Oh, there's your h value, there's your k. Simple. h equals to 0, k equals to minus 1, based on your endpoint. That's cool. Now, what else? You know that this thing goes this way. You know that it goes this way. Well, you got a problem here. You're not going that way. You're going down. Okay? So that means there must have been a reflection across the x-axis. And if you think about it, a reflection across the x-axis is the vertical one. Okay, so you know that your A value is going to be negative something. But how about your B value? Well, you're still going out in the right direction, so your B value is going to be a positive. You just don't know what it is yet. That's where this point of 1, 1 comes into play. Huge. Because now we're not going from the end point anymore. We're going from this second point. Now, take a look. Take a look at this because it's really, really cool. What did you do horizontally? Horizontally, I only moved by 1. Well, then that means, think about it, you went from 0, 0 here to 1, 1 here on the original graph. Well, if that tells you you just moved by 1 horizontally, you didn't do a heck of a lot for B. You didn't do a heck of a lot for B. Your B value is still just 1 because you have not stretched it horizontally at all. It's still a value of 1. But now, take a look at your A value. Your A value, no, is negative, but it's also, look at this. If it was, wasn't was stretched, it would have been there. There's your value of 1. You've actually gone down a value of 2. So your A value is not only flipped, right? You're not only flipping the graph, but you're stretching it a value of 2. Ah, interesting. So let's put this together and give me a formula. Okay, y equals 2. Your a value is flipped and stretched, negative 2. Your b value is 1. x minus h, h was 0, right? Plus your k value up here, which was negative 1. Ah, okay, so let's clean this up. y equals 2 minus 2. That would be x right minus one that's what it should look like and how do you verify that of course throw it on your calculator so i'm going to take that formula put it in my calculator what i've done here hit graph bada bang there it is looks very similar to what i had drawn right here very very similar but i think what i want to do is i want to check a point i want to check this point here which if you think about it that would be one minus three and i also want to check this point here which would be one two three four minus five and i want to see if those points actually show up on my graph okay well let's go boom how do you do that second table again there we go one minus 3, and then 4 minus 5. That reaffirms that you, you actually got the right formula going here, man. That's just outstanding. Okay, so let's carry on. Let's go to this one. <gasps> oh, oh, some interesting stuff happening here now. Again, look at that endpoint. That endpoint is always your H and K. Okay, so you've moved 1 to the right, so your H is going to be plus 1. Your K value, of course, is going to be 0. Well, that was the easiest thing in the world to figure out then. Now, let's see what's happening with this secondary point. Look at that secondary point here. Aha! So look, from your original endpoint, that's only over 1 but it's going the wrong direction because, of course, your original graph, you know, has to go this way. So you flip this across the y-axis, so you're doing a horizontal reflection. 
So your B value has not increased, your B value has just flipped. So that's a negative one. So there's no stretch factor for B, it's just the fact that it's moved, moved in the opposite direction. Now, look at your A value. Your A value is not up one anymore, it's actually up two. So your A value, again, is a vertical stretch of two. Oh, super, let's throw that into our equation and everything should be good. So Y equals two, there's your two value, square root, your B value is a minus one, your X value then is here, plus one, so that's a subtract one, and your K in fact is zero, so I'm not even gonna write it. So let's see what that looks like in your calculator. Popping this quickly into your calculator, there it is. Of course, I'm gonna hit graph, there's my nice graph, da da da, everything's fine. Let's check to see if those values are actually on this table. But what were those values again? Wait a second, let's go back here. What was this point? That point was 0, 0,2, and that point here looks like it's, well, 1, 2, 3, negative 3, comma, looks like negative 3, comma, 4. Let's see if that actually shows up on our calculator. 0, comma, 2, there it is. Okay, and negative 3, oh, look at that. Perfect. You know you've done it right now. Okay, so let's go on to the next question, which is here. Okay, let's see if we have the same success. Remember, find that endpoint. That endpoint is what's going to be moved back and forth. Okay, that's going to be your H and K. So look at this. There's five, six, seven, seven, and it looks like one, two, three. That looks like seven comma three. So your H is seven, your K is going to be three. Interesting. Let's find our A value. Well, our A value, if you remember, this is going upwards like that, so our A value is not reflected, and it's not going backwards, so our B value, both your A and your B are going to be positive values. Your H, of course, you figured out from here to be seven, and your K, of course, equaling to three. Great, let's continue on then. Let's see what the stretch factor is. Well, if you look from your end point to this new point here, it's only over one. So your B value, <laughs> that was easy, but now your A value goes up one, two. It actually went up two points. Now you've got your A, B, H, and K. This is just going to be a walk in the park. Y equals to 2. Square root. Your B value is 1. Your H is 7. So there's your 1. X minus 7. And your K is going to be 3. Wow. Let's see if that gives us that point now on our calculator. So let's throw that equation into our calculator right here. Oops. There it is. Okay. I'm going to hit graph. Boom. Boom. There's the graph, and then I'm going to hit second table. And I should have my point there at 7, 3. There's my starting point, just like it predicted, but it looks like my next, next nice point is going to be 11, 7. So let's see if 11, 7 actually is there. Well, look, there's our next point. And sure enough, it's at 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It is at 11, 7, and that just confirms that we did it right. Grant. Let's look at the last possible one here, this D, and see if we get a flavor for that one. Again, start with your endpoint. Your endpoint looks like it's at 1, 2, 3, comma, 0. So at 3, comma, 0, your endpoint, there's your H, there's your K. That's really easy. H equals to 3, K equals to 0. That's nice. Now, look. This thing, again, normally would go out this way. What are you doing? You're going that way. So that means that you've got some kind of reflection across the y-axis. So it's got to be a horizontal reflection. So your B value, you know, is going to be a negative. Look at this. Also, it's above. It's curving upwards like that. So your A value has to be positive. Okay, so let's figure out those values. Let's see. Starting here again, I'm going to pick this guy up here, and I'm going to go, oh, look horizontally, I didn't go very far. Again, I only went by a value of one. Vertically, I went up one, two. Ah, okay, so my A is gonna be positive two, my B is gonna be negative one. Ah, oh, yippee skippy, let's, let's figure out the formula. Y equals two, my A being two again. Square root, my B is gonna be negative one. X minus my H is gonna be three. And my K is going to be, oh, well, it's zero. I'm just going to leave it out. 
Well, that should be the formula. Let's throw it in our calculator and find out. All right, popping that equation into our calculator that we just figured out. Let's hit the graph. Oh, there it looks an awful lot like what the graph here was. Okay, although you can't barely see it now. And now we have to look for that point. Look for that point. We got a point here. We have a point at 3 comma 0. We have a point at 2 comma looks like 1, 2. And we have a point at negative 1 comma 4. So those three points should be on there. Okay, so let's check it out. Go to our graph, hit second table. And sure enough, there's the, there's the uh, 2, 2, there's the 3, 0, and there's the negative 1, 4, just as predicted. So you know you did this right. So I hope that really helps you understand how to determine equations off of the graph. But again, the most important thing, find your A, find your B, find your H, find your K.